Hey guys, so we're back with a new video. Today I'm going to show you guys how to change out your brake rotors and pads on your Ford F-150 to the PowerStop Z23 Sport Kit. All right, so our first step is to get the wheel off, and before we do that, we need to jack the truck up. So you want to put something on the back of the truck to hold that tire in place, like a wheel chock or something. And we'll just stick this in place here. Right under where your running board is, you'll see this little arrow right here. That's your jack point for the front. All right, so this is what it looks like when you get the wheel off. So you're gonna need a 13 millimeter on the caliper bracket assembly. Once you have both of those off, then the caliper is free to come off. Okay, we'll compress this in a minute, but you really want to try to hang this up somewhere so it's not hanging by the hose because you don't want to damage this hose. All right, so we'll just hook this caliper on. There's actually a little metal bracket here that I can hook it onto right here, and that'll keep that tension off the hose. Now you have two bolts for the brake caliper bracket right here. There's one here and there's one here. These guys are really tight, so if you're using an impact, you won't have any trouble getting those off, but they are torque spec to like 180 some odd foot pounds, and it is a 21 millimeter socket. And from the factory, they do put Loctite on these. Okay, and once you get them broken free, they come out fairly easy. This is what it looks like. You can see that Loctite they installed from the factory. The washer actually doesn't come off, so you don't have to worry about losing it. And then our bracket is off. Look at these pads, they're just about gone. I knew it was time for me to do a brake change. And then at this point, this may be easy or hard depending on how this rotor is on here. So a lot of times you can just hit it with your hand that it'll come free. Other times you gotta use like a five or a 10 pound sledge, give it a couple whacks, it'll come right off. Now, one important tip here, you wanna make sure you clean all of this surface rust off because you want the new rotor to sit on there perfectly flat. And what I use for that is just a drill and a wire brush attachment. Just like that. And this makes pretty quick work of it. All right, so our next step is to yank our brake pads and clips out here. We're gonna pull the slides and relubricate them. So let's bring this into the workshop to do that. All right, so we're gonna take the old pads out I and mean, you can do this while it's on the truck too. A little tap with the hammer comes right out. Now these clips come out here and you wanna pay attention to where this little springy part is that goes to the outside or not to the inside, otherwise it'll hit the rotor. And then you just need a screwdriver to pop these out. And just wedge it behind that little springy portion. Okay, and then we'll wire brush these right here. All right, we'll get the new clips installed now. Right now, this particular power stop kit I'm installing is the Z23. This is just the sport package. They also make a like truck tow package, which is the Z36. And the only difference between the two kits, the rotors are exactly the same, is the brake pads and the compound that they use. In the kit, they give you new slider boots and also new clips. So I wanna make sure that we install all new clips and you don't have to put the new boots on, but I like to do it anyway so I can check the condition that the pins are in. So we got our four new clips and we wanna make sure we put a little bit of caliper lube on these inside surfaces and that will keep these from like chattering, right? You don't wanna go through this whole job and have a set of noisy brakes. So I like to use the CRC synthetic brake and caliper grease. I'll just put a little dab in each of these and then I'll just work it in this area with my finger just to kind of coat that entire surface. You have a springy, like a little spring side here, and that goes to the outside. These just kind of pop in place. If you have a hard time getting them in, you can also just kind of press them in with a screwdriver, but I would recommend like going down in the corner. So we got our clips in. Now what we want to do is we want to pull our slide. All right, so one thing you do want to check is make sure that they move freely. If they don't, then there's either some gunk in there, or if it's seized totally, you're gonna have to replace the whole caliper bracket. So let's pull this one here. And to get the boot off, you just simply pull. That definitely needs to be cleaned up a bit. Looks like some water got in there. So that's one reason I like changing the boots out. So you don't wanna put too much grease in here because it will affect how far this pushes in here. If there's too much grease in here, this is not gonna push in all the way, and you're gonna have an issue with your brakes wearing them evenly. Put a little bit around here, like this, and about that much, honestly. And we'll just coat this whole thing again. All right, so we got our pin cleaned up, we got it greased. I'm gonna slip one of the new boots on, just like that. That's all there is to it. We'll slide that in, and you just push it on all the way, and it'll automatically catch the other side of that. And we're gonna do the same thing for this side. All right, this other one I had to clean up quite a bit. This one was actually not seized in there, but it was 
sticking a little bit. There wasn't much grease in there, so definitely some water got in there at some point. So I just took some 220 grit sandpaper, sanded it down a little bit, cleaned it up with a wire brush also. We'll make sure this one gets maybe a little bit more grease than the other one because it's pretty dry inside and that works 10 times better already. All right, so the caliper bracket is ready to go back on the truck. So what we need to do now is we need to compress the caliper pistons and then we can put the new rotor on and we'll get this installed. All right, now before you compress your caliper pistons, you really want to open the cap on your brake fluid reservoir because it's actually gonna push fluid back into the reservoir as you compress those pistons. Now we're gonna compress our pistons on our caliper and I have this really cool tool here. It's a ratcheting spreader here that goes in between and it has these magnetic plates depending on the size of your caliper. So since this is a larger dual piston caliper on a truck, I'm gonna use the larger plates. So all we do is we just spin this back in, try to find out where it fits right about there and then you just go like this. And then you wanna make sure you keep an eye on your fluid reservoir because it can overflow, especially if you've topped it off in the past. And you can definitely see that that level has come up. It's actually at max here. So you wanna make sure you don't go over, otherwise you're gonna have a mess. All right, and then we also wanna make sure that our surfaces are clean here and on the back side here where the brake pads run. So we're just gonna hit that with the drill real quick because we will be putting some of that brake caliper lube on those surfaces. All right, so that's ready to go. Now let's get our brake rotor back on. All right, now it's really important that you put the right rotor on the correct side, or the correct rotor on the correct side, should I say. And Power Stop actually put stickers on theirs, and in the part number you'll see in this particular one, XR. The front and rear rotors are definitely different. The rear rotor is a little bit smaller. And because of the cross drilling and slotting on here, you want that pattern to be going in the correct direction. So before we put this on, we need to clean this. So we're just gonna hit it with some brake clean. All right, we'll clean both sides here. Just make sure you don't have greasy hands when you do this. And it's as easy as that putting the new rotor on. So we're gonna put our brake caliper bracket back on. They had Loctite on here. I'm not gonna put Loctite, but I am gonna put some copper anti-seize on here. All right, and I'm gonna get these snug and then we're gonna torque them down. There actually is a torque spec for these. Now the torque spec on the caliper bracket bolts is 184 foot pounds, so it's pretty tight. So you're gonna need a torque wrench to do this or you can just kinda gorilla tighten them all right now at this point we're ready to put our new brake pads on now the power stop pads are not directional as far as you know inside and outside they're exactly the same left and right so driver and passenger side and then you want to have some more caliper lube here and you don't want to go crazy on here you just want to hit the ends right here where it goes into those little clips so it can slide in there freely all right so what i like to do is Locate the bottom tab in place here. Make sure you're not getting any grease on your rotors. And then the top one should slide right in and then you can just push the pad right against the rotor. And we'll do the same for the back. All right, and you don't want a ton on there. That's about as much as you want right there. All right, now we're ready to put our caliper back on. And we also want to apply a little bit of this grease on the mating surfaces to the pads. So I like to just dab a little bit on and I'll kind of wipe it around with my finger. All right, now this is the part when you find out if you compressed your caliper far enough. Now they do have shims on here to try to get rid of noise, but I still like to put a little bit of this lube on those surfaces that are in contact with the brake pad. So we just slide this right over the brake pad and then we try to push our slide pins in if they're in the way. Now these are 13 millimeter, they get torqued to 27 foot pounds. All right, and then we're all reassembled. All we have to do is put the wheel back on and lower the truck, tighten everything up, and then we'll move to the back side. All right, now if you're crazy like me and like to torque everything, these are 150 foot-pounds for the wheel lugs. Now what I like to do after I get that in place, don't mind my dirty truck, is I like to press the brake a couple times 
to get those pistons back out and that should actually drop my level again. All right, now you wanna move your wheel chock from this side to either the front or the opposite side, obviously, because we have to pull this tire off. So I just jack up the actual axle instead of putting it under the pumpkin and then I'll put a jack stand under there to hold it up. All right, so now we're on the back side here and the caliper bolts for the bracket are also 13 millimeter. You will notice that these will tend to spin on you. So what I like to do is get a pair of the needle nose vice grips and stick them in there. A regular like combo wrench won't fit in there unless you have like a low profile one. All right, so I just like using these because they fit in there. I notice on the rear, there's like blue Loctite on these. Now this will normally just come right off very easily. Now this is the electronic parking brake module. Now we have an extra special step to be able to compress the piston on this particular caliper. You can't compress it even with the emergency brake off. You actually have to put that parking brake into what's called maintenance mode. And I'm gonna show you how to do that now. All right, so you have your parking brake switch down here. So what you wanna do is you wanna press that in and also depress the gas pedal and hold both of those in turn off your ignition and then turn it back on. And I'll show you how that works. All right, so I'm pressing the parking brake button in. You'll notice that that message came up. I have my foot on the accelerator. We're gonna shut it off. Don't pull the key out, all right? And then turn it on. Don't start the truck either. And then give it a minute. Park brake not released. Now let's give it about 10 seconds and you'll see park brake maintenance mode. Now that's gonna allow you to compress that caliper on the back. If you notice that it's not compressing, it's because you did not put it in maintenance mode. Don't force it because you don't want to damage any of the valving that is in this electronic parking brake assembly. And that's it. Clean this up real quick. 24 fits on here nice and tight. You would think it'd be standard size because it is an American truck, but it's 24 millimeter. So we're going to get both of the caliper bracket bolts off. And then the bracket comes right off. We have to get our rear rotor off and there are no drilled and tapped holes on here to be able to use like a back out bolt. So if you can't get this off of here, you gotta give it a couple wax with like a 10 pound sledge. All right, and that's all good to go. All right. Let's uh, take care of this now and we'll get this on and we'll get everything back together. All right, so we're back in a workshop. Let's get these old pads out. All right. One, there's the other. These are shaped quite a bit different. Also, these spring clips are different here and my little trick to getting them off is just to use the flathead screwdriver and kind of move it into the slot here and just wedge it. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on here. All right, and then we just put our clips on here and you want this portion here with the two holes up top. And the trick to these is to almost hook the bottom in first and then roll it up onto it and then it'll fit right in place. Now we'll check our slides. These both feel really good, All right? And as you can see, these, these slides are in a lot better shape than the front ones. And then we'll just push that in, new boot. All right, so let's get the rotor on the truck and we'll get the bracket and the brake pads and we'll finish this up. So for the rear brakes, both rotors come in the same box. If you buy this kit and you'll see they also have stickers, rear passenger side, the other one will say rear driver side. So you just wanna make sure that you do install the correct rotor on the correct side. Let's get our caliper bracket mounted back on. All right, and we'll get these snugged on. These are also 184 foot pounds. Time for our pads, and they're both identical inside and outside. These ones are a lot easier to put on than the front ones, I find. All right, now we got our pads on. Now we're ready for our caliper. We wanna put just a little bit of this grease on that metal surface, and then we can put our caliper back on. We'll get one bolt started. All right, and then that 13 millimeter, and you're gonna need something to hold on to that nut, and just until it grabs, and starts tightening down a little bit, and then it should stay in place. And then once again, 27 foot pounds. And that's all there is to it. I'm gonna get the wheel on, and then I'm gonna talk about the wear in process for these particular brakes. All right, so we're back on, and what we wanna do last here is pump the brakes once more to seat that in place. 
and then we want to check our fluid level to make sure that we're very close to max here. If we're not, we want to top that off with the appropriate brake fluid for the truck. Now that we're done with our brake job, we have to get the brakes out of maintenance mode. So it's actually the same procedure, but instead of pushing the button in, you want to pull it. So we're going to pull the button back. We're going to put our foot on the gas. You're going to hear it make some noise here and then we're going to turn the ignition off and then we're going to turn it back on while we're holding that and then in about 10 seconds it'll come out of maintenance mode i'm going to shut the ignition off without taking the key out and then i'm going to turn it back on okay and then i can let go of that button and the gas and you'll notice that that maintenance message is gone all right guys so let's talk about breaking the brakes in wait that. All right, guys, so we're going to talk about getting the brakes worn in initially, and they actually give you a guide in the Power Stop brake pad kit, which is really nice. All right, so here's the braking procedure from Power Stop. So first, you want to accelerate to 40 miles an hour and slow to 10 miles an hour aggressively, and you want to do that five times. The second step is to accelerate to 35 miles an hour and then decelerate to five miles an hour moderately. And then you wanna drive around for about five minutes to let the brakes cool off. So we're back from our break-in test drive here and you can definitely see that the rotors are not the same color anymore. They definitely heated up. And you do see, you know, even contact with the pads on there. So that's good. All right, guys, so that wraps it up for this video. If you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button. It helps spread the video out to other people and it helps me bring you guys new content every single week week. Thanks for watching and consider getting these brakes if you have a Ford F-150 or really any other car. They make, uh, PowerStop makes these brakes for almost every single car. They're great. They're, you know, not only high performance, they, they really stop the car really fast and they last a long time with these carbon ceramic pads. So thanks for watching. Check out my other DIY videos. Until next time.